Okay, an exciting day. I guess this is the first unboxing video I've ever done. So, we'll see how it goes. My, my new uh, Arbor and Jacob's Chuck has arrived. Let's just see. It's kind of rattled around in there. Now there's the Chuck. And the Arbor. That looks good. So, uh, just a little word to the wise, I guess, here. When I took this one out, I marked it with a, a white pencil, and I also marked my drill press, uh, the quill, so that if I want to put this one back in there, I know which way it goes. Uh, because you can rotate this 180 degrees, like I showed you before. So let's take this out. Yeah, that appears to be the same size. That's good. Glad I ordered the right one. So I'm going to take this out of here, degrease it. Let's see what the chuck looks like first. See if that needs any cleanup. Boy, I can tell you that's a lot smoother already. You hear that? There is no play in that whatsoever. So that looks good. I'm gonna I guess this has got some grease on it too, some oil. So I'll clean that up as well. So let me uh get the key in here. Let me clean both of these up and then I'll be right back. Alright, everything cleaned up nice. Um the one thing I noticed about this is that it's laser engraved. Right here, I don't let's see if I can show that to you. It says four from Morse Taper four, Jacobs Taper three down here. So that's kind of nice. I didn't have I'll never have to guess again what this is or measure it. It's clearly laser and it's marked and and clear clear as a day, you know what I have. So that's that one. And the Jacob's Chuck is much clearly marked. Uh, the other one was laser engraved that you saw before, but this is Jacob's 3A, 3 taper. Okay. And the other thing that they do up is it looks like they engrave the date of manufacture. 2014, 1108. I don't know if that's November 8th or August 11th. You know, it depends on which way they do it. Then there's a series of 1-1. One -one. So, that looks really good. So I got everything cleaned up, all the greasy stuff off of there. We'll mate that together. And that, that's a nice fit. Look how much further in that goes than when compared to this chuck. This one it's sticking out about a quarter. This one she's seated right down in there. I haven't even tapped it yet, but that just felt like a nice fit. Perfect fit. Okay, but I don't want to put this in there yet. I want to measure run out on this first. Then we'll seat the chuck. So let's take this over to the drill press and see how it uh how it works out compared to the other settings I had, or measurements I should say. Got the arbor in, uh, and I marked it with a white pencil, so if I do reverse it I know which way it goes. So I got it set at zero. Let's see, wait a minute. Right about right there is probably zero, hang on. Okay. 
Yeah, that's good. Okay. So there's three, three thousandths of an inch. I think with the other one I had two. But I, I'm going to reverse this and see what we get when we do that. I'm going to get that in position. camera okay got it rotated to 180 degrees I believe I have it on dead center there well, let's just rotate this that's about a little over two just yeah I'd say we're I don't know if we gained anything, but maybe a little. It went under a zero there. Let's see where it went under. Right about right there. Let me set that to zero. That is zero. I get a, if I touch the table, I'm going to call that about... Two and a half thousandths run out on that. All right, let's put the let's put the chuck on there and see what happens with that. Okay, if you remember, uh, when I checked around on this chuck, I, I was able to I, I did it on this face right here, or this part of the cylinder, and I've got a lot of room right there to work with. Now on the Jacobs. I don't really have that much room. I'm going to try and get a reading off of that right there, but that's not a room, a lot of room to work with. But we'll see what I can do. We'll see if I can get get my indicator set up on that space between the key chuck hole and the and the part, the bottom of the chuck before it starts to taper away. So that I just want to show that difference to you. I'm going to try it, but we'll and we'll see what happens. Okay, I I. I believe I'm going to be able to get an accurate reading without it dipping into those holes or hitting the taper. I think it'll be all right. Let's just spin it once here. I think I've got it set top dead center. And there it is about six. Maybe going a half the other way. So. Is it reach six? Just barely. Let me set that to zero right there. Try not to bump things too much here. Okay, so that's zero. Six and a half maybe. Oh, it's six and a half. I think it's a little shy of that, but anyway, that's a little bit of an improvement. We were at eight or so on the other one. Um, so now we'll chuck up the, the uh, drift pin punch, the same one I used before, and see what we get on that. Okay, this is the just about the middle. I mean, I got to come down a little bit here, I think. I think that's what we did the last time. Probably should have went up and looked at the video to make sure we were doing the same thing. Let's see if I get it back to zero here. 
Let's see, zero is about there. And this one gives me about 12, it looks like. 12 thousandths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out, rechuck it, just to make sure I don't have it in there cockeyed, but I'm going to try it one more time. Okay, I rechucked it. Now I'm going to spin it now. I thought I had it at zero. That somewhere there was zero. Now well, we've got to get this dialed in. Zero. Six thousandths, it looks like. Quite a difference if just because of the way I rechucked it. So that's good compared to what I had. I believe I had eight to ten with the other one. So I did pick up a little. I got a little hiccup in there on the shaft right there. But I'm still about six. So I'll take that. That's good. I'm going to drop this down and measure it down at the bottom and see what that looks like. Now I guess to be totally scientific I should have measured how much of this I had chucked up in the other one. But I can't go back and do that. So I got this at zero. Right there's the high spot. Six. I'm at six again. Well, there I went to seven. So we're going to call that seven. Six. Now that's it. Ooh, what I got going on there? Try it the other way. Six and a half, we'll call it. Not bad. Picked up a little bit. Now, the question is, was it worth 170 bucks to pick up a couple thousands difference? And it's probably not, but and uh, the uh, the thing about it is, is if is if you've got a bad, if your runout is uh, you know real bad, I can see where this would make a big difference in in the way your uh, drill press would operate. So I'm going to take and do the same thing we did before, drill some holes. So let me get things set up for that. Okay, same setup, same half inch bit out of here, and. Uh, We'll give it a try here. I'm just going to pull this away from the fence and see how it runs. You know, see how if we get much wobble here. I got to try and keep my hand out of the shot here. Same thing. That that's nice. That's not moving, the wood's staying right where it should without it, without me even holding it. So this is running nice and true. So I like that. Oh, wrong key. One here's one difference I do like. The difference in the keys. The one from the one from uh, Grizzly's got this spring loaded deal here so that you can't leave it in the chuck. Uh, I would never do that anyway, I don't think. So this just goes in much easier. No effort at all. And I like that a lot better. Okay, let's try the uh, Forstner bit, the one inch.
believe that's what we used, yep. Remember it's got the tri sides on it, so I want to make sure I get those on the jaws correctly. find an open spot here there we go gotta leave room for that two inch I'll come over here and do that two inch in, out here a little wobble I think I had the same thing last time clean hole again though yeah they both got a little a little oversized not bad though okay let's get that two inch bit It's not moving. I don't think it. I don't think it moved with the other one either. The reason I was getting chatters, I was taking out that smaller hole at the same time. It's a nice clean hole as well. Overall, I'd say, you know, it probably wasn't worth it. You know, at the by the time I got done paying uh, shipping and everything, it was 175 bucks. So that's a pretty expensive pin vise. Um, the one difference that uh, I noticed is this one has a smaller range although I've never had a bit in, in my drill press that small uh, this one goes down to eighth inch this one goes down to one millimeter so a little bit uh, better range on it So there you go that's that's my little uh, experiment with the drill press a number uh, Jacobs Chuck versus the uh, overseas and I, I can't say for sure, but I believe the Arbor was U.S. made. So two U.S. made products against this one and a little, a little more, a little better improvement, I should say, with the run out. But uh, really, when it comes right down to it, it's probably negligible. So I'm happy with it, though. I'm happy. Uh, one thing I do like, like I said, better is the Chuck Key. This spring-loaded business here is, I suppose I get rid of that and cut it off but um, anyway thanks for watching